So decide what you value the most Cause if you make the wrong choice It could cost you your head Spend it wisely I really hope that this coffee table can hold my weight <laughs> Because I put some on Ooh, I, I, I like the decor Tiny! Hi, Tiny! Hello! Hello! Cutie Okay. I really battled with myself on whether or not I was going to come back to the internet because being completely unplugged, I just don't know that I could ever explain like how good it was, but Ooh, I'm I going bet. to- uh, do I bet it was so nice. I bet it was so nice. Do my best to put it into words. Hi, Tiny. Hi. Bye. The reality is that most people watching this video have no idea what it's like to be completely detached like that because we're not- allowed to you're obviously somebody wait yeah Jun junipero says or unipero mx can i call you mx didn't she get rid of a crap ton of her tattoos yeah just where did her tattoos don't go oh interesting who consumes youtube content hi thanks for being here make sure to like and subscribe tiktok or instagram Hello. or twitter which is by the way the dark web now when did twitter become the dark web dude i was gone so long that when I decided to download social media again, I kept looking for Twitter. I was like, where's Twitter? I kept typing it into the app store and it took me so long to figure out that it's called X now. And it makes sense. I feel like it's called X because it's literally X-rated. It is the dark web. I've never seen so much and in one place immediately. Like I did not consent to this. I feel like I'm gonna delete that app. But anyways, TV shows like Amazon Prime or Hulu or Netflix. So I didn't just get off social media for about a quarter of this Whoa. journey, maybe a third of this journey. I wasn't even consuming any type of content on screens. I wasn't watching anything, not TV shows, not movies, nothing. And I really wanna share what that experiment and what this experience was like. But first, <laughs> some quick plugs. I've been gone for a year, so please indulge me. If you're watching this video, that means my new single, Where Did I Go, is out. Dude, ugh. one of the more challenging aspects of this has been not being able to share music and art as I was creating it. So please go stream that song, watch the little visual that I made, and very, very rare for me up till this point, but will not be rare soon. I actually have merch coming out that I'm so stoked about because I'm very excited to announce that it's coming out through my own design company, Look Design Company. This design brand has been years years in the making i couldn't Ugh, i'm so annoyed like it's it, it, i get it she's coming back to plug but it kind of seems counterintuitive or counter if she learned anything on the introspection journey why would she come back and plug stuff does that make sense like why so is this not about her introspection journey it kind of feels weird like this means do you know what i'm saying so we're not having like Okay, I accept it. Everyone's on a different journey. Quite find my style or what I was as a brand. Finally figured it out. It's been a very slow, gradual process. I really wanted to take my time on it and I think that it was worth it. I'm only starting with a couple items because I wanna make sure that everything goes smoothly before I dive head first because I've learned a lot of lessons these past few years. A lot of them about biting off more than you can chew. So I'm taking my time, I'm releasing these slowly and the items that are in the store currently are on pre-order. But I do have a ton of designs and not just like t-shirts and hoodies. I have a lot of items coming out outside of apparel. So you can head to Gabby Hanna official.com and click shop. Also on gabbyhannahofficial.com, you'll find a link to my Patreon. I'm really, really excited to be back on Patreon. I love Patreon. I used to be obsessed with Patreon. I love the community on Patreon. I love having the more exclusive intimate space to share things with- True, my Patreon's popping right now, guys. Join the Discord, let's go. A smaller group of people that I wouldn't want to share too too publicly i love brainstorming there i love getting feedback there and i actually have more content prepared for patreon than i have on my main channel so if you want blogs exclusive videos live streams and also discount codes for look design company and jesus the first few minutes of this video is literally a plug to pay her guys pay me by liking the stream thank you so much it's free for you and i make money like the stream thank you cameo then head over to gabbyhannahofficial.com and click the members only page i am trying cameo i've gotten a lot of requests for it and i realized that so often when i go out and people stop me they're like can i get a video for my sister for my friend a lot of people just want videos of me saying hello so i figured i would offer that as a service for people who want it so i'm just gonna see how that goes as this video comes out i'm in england speaking at oxford which what is that real <laughs> what world are we in that is a sentence i never thought i would say but i'm not going to be on my phone a lot slash hopefully not really 
at all while I'm there. So those will not be starting up until the second or third week of March. But my cameo will be linked on my website. So again, gabbyhannahofficial.com. Sign up for text and email so that you'll be alerted when I actually do do cameos. And they're going to be really limited. So I'm only going to be doing like 20 a week, probably maybe less. So if you want to be notified when I am actually doing new ones, go ahead and sign up for text and emails. Okay, I think that's all I got for now after I just rambled for so long, but go stream my new music. I have a Ugh. lot more music coming and I would love your support on that. My new design company, lookdesign.co. Go cop some shirts. Patreon is back. Go become a member. Jesus, five, we're almost five minutes in, bro. I have a 20 minute video. And trying out Cameo. And it's all sitting on a brand new website, gabbyhannahofficial.com. Go sign up for texts and emails. And while we're here, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, let's get into this. Thank you for indulging me. Okay, so why Five did minutes. I step back for so long? I think that there's some obvious reasons for a lot of you. You might have guessed a few reasons. And there's some reasons that were more personal to me. But I would say that the thing that forced me to take the break that I desperately needed since 2018 was honestly just not wanting to be a part of so much drama and stop giving the public so much access to me. I could not get online without seeing a new rumor. That was the lesson you learned, Gabby? Gabby, you made the drama. What? She literally created the drama. A new story. It just wasn't fun to be on. But she didn't. What? These fucking Jared Leto fake ass. Oh. My God. Online anymore. Like online was my safe space since since I was a kid. This is where I came to make friends because I was too. Her cameo is a thousand dollars. No way, bro. For real? No way. A thousand dollars? No way. Scared in person to talk to people, but all of a sudden my comment section were just filled with so much vitriol that it was just like. Why am I even here? I actually tried to take a step back so many times before this big recent break, but I always had some type of oh my god, these edits, bro, contractual obligation that I needed to be there for. It was either a book deal that I was obligated to promote through a certain number of videos, a book tour, an album I'd been working on for years. Actually, no, two albums that I'd been working on for years, a podcast that had ads booked out for literally months that I had to fulfill. So I was bound legally and financially to stay but besides all is she trying to trigger me with these with these cuts are you guys seeing these edits she's literally trying to trigger me right now bro okay i'm not a gabby hannah fan i just pay attention to gabby's life like because i want to see if she's going to get better but like these edits are literally trying to trigger me i know they are i know she's just like britney simon's gonna watch this video and i'm gonna edit so she gets fucking triggered i'm just kidding but like literally it's like every, it don't even make sense all that besides the legal obligation besides the deals besides that i never wanted to feel like i was letting people win i don't let other people's opinions or actions dictate mine i didn't ever want to be the image of somebody who couldn't pers are we being gaslit by Gany gabby hannah right now we're being gaslit bro we're literally being gaslit by gabby hannah I didn't want to go down giving anyone the satisfaction feeling like they'd won, but I was losing regardless. My pride was keeping me from my peace for so long. I didn't even have the energy to properly promote my projects anyway. I literally would wake up one day and realize that a song had come out the day before and I didn't even realize it. So I didn't tell anybody about it because I forgot. <laughs> so once my final project came out, which was this time next year, my album that came out over a year ago. I was finally free. I didn't have any more looming projects that were kind of like nagging at me. I felt like I could actually step away without wondering, well, what if I put this out? So I officially released everything I had in the vault and I was just sitting on a clean slate basically. And it was time to figure out like, what's next? What do I wanna do? I've been given so many amazing opportunities, but for the last decade, I've been absolutely drowning in work. It's like that cliche. of you know you work so hard for the american dream and then you work so hard that you never stop to enjoy it and like i said it was absolutely incredible it's a blessing that i would not trade for the world but i haven't had time to just simply create to create 
literally since I started YouTube. Everything I did became a grind. I couldn't have a hobby or a passion without finding a way to monetize it because I needed to justify taking the time to do it. I didn't give myself the time or the space to practice a skill before putting it out in the public, releasing it to the world, which again, I'm grateful for all of that because it made me a lot. She's such an artist. Gabby's such a little narcissistic artist, huh? She's just such the, like, she's just so clearly an artist and just so, like, mentally ill, neurodivergent, whatever. But, like, she's so, like, she thinks she's so, you do, you do have to have a pretty high narcissistic, like, level to think this highly of yourself. And I think, like, it probably makes it so she is successful in a lot of ways. Like, I love that for her. But I would rather be poor. <laughs> I'd rather be middle class. I just can't handle it. It's like, seriously, like so many people in the artist bubble that I know, it's just like the narcissism and not NPD, just narcissism. It's so big. It's exhausting. Yes, Pierre, her and Pierre should date. Oh my God. They would be battling each other for attention. They would be sucking the oxygen out of the room. Yes, Bryson says it's given Pierre XO. Literally, these kinds of people are so emotionally exhausting to me with peace and love. Like again, not NPD narcissism, but just like high on that. I'm an artist. I'm deeply seeing things that the NPCs can't. I'm deeply involved with my spirit and connecting with the sun, moon, and I'm literally like orgasming out of my shell. And I'm, I just, oh my God, I can't. A lot better. I will never shy away from true constructive criticism, even if it's harsh, because I want to know. So yeah, I was just like really super sad and lonely and always stressed and not having fun like ever. I was snapping at people all the time, avoiding a lot of the tough inner work that you have to do in order to grow. I was in this state of arrested development. I got kind of famous and kind of rich at 23 years old. So I- mm -hmm never had a reason from 23 years old i was being really heavily rewarded no 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 sage says just sounds reasonable though she shouldn't have been on the internet but she stayed because of her obligations to work no no no! don't fall for her story sage that's the narrative she's telling you she's bragging that she has money and clout coming in she's bragging that she has all these obligations but instead of learning the lesson of what she should have learned she came back and redid it she's about to redo the same lesson She's going to go through the cycle of burnout again, but in a, like, there, I'm not seeing actual change. I'm seeing again mold in the house and she's painting the walls to feel like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, no. Like, I feel like she's selling us a story right now. And again, I'm not sensing any actual, like, change. Just saying the things that she knows people want to hear for minimal work and frankly poor behavior so anyway that last album comes out and i'm in a place to just finally stop in my head maybe forever maybe not but i what do you mean you just announced all the work you're doing you just ask people to join your memberships which means you're gonna have to ob you're obligated to now give them content you can't stop now now you're gonna go in it even more she just came back harder than ever she just said watch my music sign up for my patreon oh and now i'm starting this brand new venture so no, now you're obligating yourself to more work. So you didn't cut back. You came back with more, which is fine. But you're saying that that was the problem. So again, it's it's fine. I kept failing. I'd get off for a few days, a couple weeks, even a couple months, but I would always buckle and come back. So I told myself, one year, just commit to a year. Give yourself this year to figure out who you are okay. as yourself. Take the option. I mean, that's nice. Like, that's good. And off the table. Love yourself enough to figure out who you are outside of this glass house that you've built yourself. So on Valentine's Day. Okay, was this outside of YouTube or outside of everything? Let's see. 2023, I decided to love myself. I made my last social media post and I deleted everything. And I was serious about it and it was amazing. So okay. here's how that went. Immediately, okay. I was initially very sad, but in a healing, bittersweet way. It's kind of like breaking up with someone who's toxic. You're glad to be free but it still really hurts for yeah. a while that was your whole world that was all okay, you knew true, it true. was comfortable it okay true true felt safe even though it wasn't and now that it's gone it leaves this big empty space that you don't know how to fill or what to fill it with i feel like i had no purpose like i literally didn't exist i had nowhere to be there were days even weeks at a time where i was literally literally physically not seen by anybody but eventually and it didn't even take that long my brain got used to not having all that dopamine all the time all that constant distraction and things started to feel like really nice 
quiet. Time is our okay. most valuable asset, and so is silence. Those are two things that the media has done a very great job at taking away from us, stealing from us. Without all this noise fighting for my attention from every corner of every screen, I started having new thoughts positive ones, kind ones, calm ones, generous and peaceful ones. I started journaling a lot, talking okay. to myself, talking to God, creating without the pressure to release anything, practicing skills before I shared them. It's just like completely, totally clear headed, getting back to the root of art because art is intrinsically worthless. There is no inherent value. It's it's so arbitrary. We as human beings created in God's image, the ultimate creator, we're meant to create, but we're not necessarily meant. What God is she worshiping you? To profit off of it. My mental health. What did she say? What she say? We as human beings created in God's image, the ultimate creator, we're meant to create, but we're not necessarily meant to profit off of it. My mental health skyrocketed. There was this physical rewiring of my brain. Like my brain knew that this constant dopamine wasn't coming in. So it started like producing its own. <laughs> stopped having nightmares. I started sleeping better. My diet got better. I was able to use a lot of the time that I was on my phone to stretch and massage myself. My skin cleared up. I started giving my cats a lot more long focused attention that they deserve. I was spending literally hours of the day, almost every day, just being, not doing. I was human being just genuinely rest and i'm so unfathomably grateful that i was able to do that it was truly a gift from god so a few months in i need to like reach out to someone online through a dm so i re-downloaded the apps and i'm like okay now that i've downloaded these apps you know it's been a few months maybe i can consume yippee says i don't know what y'all want her to say about this this is her experience no no no, no. look we're just critical of people that have a habit gabby's like an abusive boyfriend Okay, she's an abusive girlfriend. Okay, and she comes back every time and says like, I've changed. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Okay, and like, we're waiting to see if she's changed. But obviously, it doesn't matter if she's changed for us, but like, we are curious about her journey. But Gabby does this every time. And so the question is like, Pierre does this. Trisha does this. It's like, they've definitely gotten better. They're definitely different. But is she going to go back to the same cycle? So it's like, we love hearing her story, but it's kind of like a toxic girlfriend that's come back with a different story every time. So we're just like waiting. We're like, mm hmm. Yeah. OK. Like we're a little cynical. We're a little like, OK, sure, sure, sure. A little bit of media here and there. But dude, it just sucked me back in so quickly. And something I realized. So wait, she got sucked in already? Every time that was. Yeah. Cam Kim says I've heard this all from her before. Literally, I've heard this. I've how many times? Have, you know what I mean? The first time it happened. But even now, when I get sucked back into that spiral, into that vortex of social media, it's like all my other bad habits instantly rush back in. My sleep schedule is bad. My diet is bad. My skincare is worse. So I'm breaking out. Yeah, because you didn't actually break the cycle. You just painted over the mold. That's the that's what I'm saying. Introspection will change you as a person fundamentally where you will not repeat the patterns because they're not even a part of the person you are anymore. So it does happen. We're like, um, I'm not going to let me let me say this in a different way, though, because I don't want it to sound like a sound. There is a temptation to this job to run yourself like to the ground. So you burn out quicker. That is separate than you just like being neurodivergent or chronically ill and having so few spoons that you burn out no matter what. Because like I just think like burning out is going to be a part of like my chronic health life. But I don't burn out on the job in the same way. Like I don't overwhelm myself with the job. I'm not burned out at the job. I'm burned out by my body failing me, which is different. She feels... Like she keeps getting burned out by the like the comments, the job, the temptation to like grind. And she even came back five minutes of this video was promoting ways for her to make money again, which is fine. But then she didn't learn the lesson that she should have learned in that year of being offline, which is what is money, right? And then why are you focused on if you're not again, if you're going to come back into the hustle era, that's different. Like I'm in my hustle era. I'm working the most. I want to work for the next few years in hopes that I can take a month off or a year off or whatever I want to do. But that's a very different goal than like what this is. So again, like why is she doing it? What is she trying to learn? What's the lesson she's learning? I want to know like what does she think is happening? Like I haven't seen like I'm not saying she can't make money. I'm saying it's interesting that on a video where she says she's changed, 
She spends the first five minutes talking about money and adding more onto her plate and then saying she's right back to her old habits. And I'm like, yeah, because you didn't break the cycle, which is very, very difficult, by the way. And she's allowed to not be perfect and she's allowed not to break the cycle. So, okay, so like we're just viewers watching living art and she's the art. So I'm not saying she had to come back perfect. I'm saying, oh, okay. So, hmm. I'm restless, I'm sleepless, anxiety and depression come rushing back in. I'm in physical pain, I feel empty, and I keep trying to fill that hole with something. And I realized that's a God-shaped hole that I'm trying to fill. I'd have been pushing him out for so long because I was choosing this outside world instead. That's what it is to sell your soul, by the way. It's not, you know, this demon approaching you with a contract to sign in blood. Not always, anyway. It's the choices you make. It's what you decide to do for money. If you're not glorifying God, you're glorifying what is not of God. And a lot of times we're not even aware of it because of what we're being constantly told in the media. But when you get off, when you silence all these voices, you start hearing God's voice. You start talking to yourself and then start talking to God. So when I first got off social media and all of the noise stopped, that's when I started really hearing God. And then when I came back on, it was like all of this attention, all of my quiet. Okay, wait, <laughs> Shadow B says, Brittany's allergic to the word God. I'm allergic to the word God from people that might be using that in replacement of I'm crazy. Cause like, if you go back to religion and to God, it's a much more humble process Reminder that she spent the first five minutes of this video talking about money. Okay? Just a reminder. She spent the first five minutes of this video talking about money. Okay? I want to know, where's her cameo? How much is her cameo? Okay. Gabby, Hannah, cameo. Okay? Religious people? Humility. Piety. You know what I mean? Like, is it cameo? Is that what it's called? 20 videos left, a per book a personal video. I have $150 here. Um, is that different? Hold on. I'm seeing $150, message $5. Okay, that's not that expensive, but also that's interesting. Okay. Okay, who was saying it was $1,000? I'm not seeing that at all. Custom, question, birthday, roast, advice, other. Yeah, it's $150. Cameo. Oops. Remove request. Right? Did I do it right? Cameo? Ugh. Anyways, it's fine if you want God. Right? That's great. I just want to make sure you're having a healthy relationship with God. Let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong, guys. Who the fuck am I? I'm some loser on the internet. Don't listen to me. A time where I'm speaking to God all day, where I'm hearing from God all day, the assurance in the silence was gone. The health, the peace, the happiness, the joy, that was all gone. God never left. I was just ignoring him because I was choosing TikTok. This is actually getting a lot deeper than I was expecting it to. I was Super deep, bro. <laughs> so profound. I was honestly just- I'm sorry. I don't mean to bully her. I just, you know what I mean? Like, you know what? It's like, there's just a level, again, the narcissism tells you it's deep, but it's fucking not, okay? Trying to tell you what I've been up to all year, but that's what I've been up to all year. I've been building this intimate, close relationship with God and doing everything I could to understand him. I've been letting him guide my actions. I've been letting him dictate my steps. I've been letting him discipline me and heal me. I learned what it is to actually worship and pray, not to just recite the things that we're told to recite or fulfill the obligations we're told to fulfill. Not this list of rules that man tells us we need to complete in order to get to heaven. That's not what scripture says. What I learned is to actually pray, to talk to and hear from God. And it turns out worship isn't just this chore where God wants you to tell him how awesome he is. It's definitely part of it and he deserves it. But it's also for you. When you're genuinely in a place of worship, it feels good. That's the secret they don't tell you. Worship feels good. It's like when you tell somebody that loves you that you love them, 
and then that person tells you that they love you too. When you learn to actually tell God that you love him and act in a way that shows that you love him sincerely and fully with your whole mind, heart, body, and soul, God says, I love you too. So anyway, the rest of the year, I'm going in and out of downloading the apps, deleting the apps, downloading them, deleting them. And I did find a lot of value in them. Social media is not evil. Social media is a tool that can be used for good and for evil. It's like I was finally learning this balance and how to curate what I was consuming. We're the sum of the top five people we spend the most time with, right? We are what we eat. We become what we consume. But I learned a lot on social media. I learned a lot about my faith on social media. I was incredibly inspired by a lot of influencers and artists who are creating amazing, interesting, cool, actually cool music that isn't about sex and drugs and money and literally like we're literally listening to on the airwaves and we're so desensitized to sex and it's crazy how desensitized i wonder if she likes kanye sensitized we, we all love old kanye yo the way he laughs with his wife bianca sometimes i think he might be in love but also the way he literally went after kim kardashian for being a hoe on instagram and then literally drags his wife naked in public these people have lost their goddamn minds are to sex and and vanity and greed and pride like it's literally so evil and that's one major thing i would say the major thing that stepping away from social media and being alone without any outside influence led to it was an awakening when you're consuming all this Ugh, stuff you awakening is such a like a trigger word for me now spiritual awakening christ awakening awakening just feels like eh. that just tells me like mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. you are sleeping and when you get back to who you are as a human being you wake up and it's a little bit scary because you're i feel like awakening is the spiritual bubbles matrix I do. I think that's true. Like I, when I hear people say like, I've awakened, I'm awake now. It's like saying like, I don't believe in the matrix. Like I just, guys just, oh my God, it's not, there's nothing magical happening, but like maybe there's like, you can call it magical. I just mean like there's nothing outside of whatever is actually real anyways, but everyone's just like, they all think they're so special that something magical has to happen to them. I just like, don't think I'm, you know, I just think I'm a person, like I'm a tree and every tree is special, but like, you're just a tree, bro. Everybody relax waking up from a literal nightmare but anyway when i did come back online in those small spurts it was actually really fruitful it inspired me a lot it changed my sound and music the internet is a really powerful resource as long as you're not abusing it like any drug social media is a drug it's not a substance but you can be addicted to it the All same right, way that gambling go. is not a substance but you can be addicted to it the same way that sex is not a substance but you can be addicted to it you're addicted to sure. the mental that's happening you're addicted to the dopamine you're addicted to the rush the adrenaline that's i'm a dick i'm addicted to you happening i wholeheartedly believe that in the not so distant future social media addiction is going to come to the fore goth that is not true goth said hey gabby just talk to the christians they don't want you christians would love gabby don't say that the religious people would love gabby gabby deserves love i'm not saying gabby's a bad person by the way nothing in this video is about gabby being a bad person i don't think gabby's a bad person i think gabby's like a chronically at battle with herself person i don't think gabby's a bad person I don't think most people are bad people. I think Gabby's just really struggling with her internal self. And I think that's really normal. But I don't think she's a bad person. You know what I mean? Just like FYI. Forefront of culture. It's going to be a real diagnosis. It's going to require real rehabilitation. What? What? What did I just miss? I just think she's sick, you know? I wholeheartedly believe that in the not so distant future, social media addiction is going to come to the forefront of culture. It's going to be a real diagnosis. It's going to require sure. real rehabilitation. It's harming people physically, mentally, socially. It's putting relationships at risk. It's putting jobs at risk. And so many people are so absolutely hooked and living for the hit dying for the hit and it was substantially harder for me to quit than literal drugs for me and i'm sure for so many others it's a sickness and the bigger you get the worse it gets you keep chasing that high of having that one viral moment you keep seeking that love and approval and validation of others each time you have a viral moment you're reinforcing that behavior and when it doesn't come when you don't get that hit you start spiraling and start acting in ways that are outside of your character. It's something you tell yourself is fine. You can control it. You can stop it whenever. But is it fine? Can you control it?
can you stop whenever? Could you delete your apps right now and be totally okay with it? Listen, if it don't apply, let it fly. But I know a lot of people are relating, especially digital. I mean, that's true. Lots of people will be addicted. Kids are addicted to screens at like two years old. So like, absolutely, right? Like, absolutely. Um, I'm not sure how as a social media content creator, she's going to have, um, it's weird to have to, like, it's, if she's addicted to social media, how is she going to manage her career? It's sort of like difficult. I wonder if someone's going to do it for her. You know what I mean? Um, but I do think like there's a way to have that balance. I don't think you have to go cold turkey with social media if you're addicted to it necessarily. But that's interesting. Mm, see, I told you she's sick, bro. The addiction is a sickness. It's hard creators and no it's not lost on me but as a digital creator as somebody who creates content who creates music who creates art who's creating clothing who wants you to engage with that who's relying on ears and eyeballs how ironic it is for me to tell people they should consume less social media but that's how important i think it is because if i have this valuable information this amazing life-changing experience i do think you should recognize like social media is like a different version of your third place and if your third place is really toxic, like you should stop going there and go to a different place. So, you know, everyone is always like, we don't have a third place anymore. We don't have a place that's not work or home. You know, that's the Internet, right? My third place is the Internet. And if my third place isn't serving me, like choose a different third place. Like my third place is the Internet. It's also my workplace. Like I, I work at an, on a part of the Internet, but then my third place is also the Internet. But also, you know what I mean? Like work and home. That idea, like the internet is like your relationship with it. If it's not serving you as a tool, choose also a different part of the internet. Not every part of the internet is actually very toxic. You know what I mean? You know, Goth says, are narcissists inherently bad? Well, I don't think Gabby's NPD. I don't think like like uh, Pierre is NPD necessarily. But being a narcissist, okay, having narcissistic personality disorder is very damaging, but it doesn't inherently make you a bad person. And then being high on the narcissism scale doesn't necessarily make you a bad person, right? Depending on your values. It just like, it's also a requirement of a lot of people who are famous. So everyone has narcissism within them. Even you goth, every one of us, myself included, we all have narcissism within us. It's about healthy ego versus not a unhealthy ego. So it's about healthy ego versus unhealthy ego. And, and Gabby has really unhealthy ego and is trying to be better. But I don't know if she realizes like that's a part of the problem, right? So I think that's kind of like the, the problem we're seeing is like there's nothing inherently wrong with having a mental illness and there's nothing inherently wrong with being narcissistic unless we're attributing narcissist, narcissistic as always the unhealthy versions of it. So unhealthy ego. And so in that way, I would say like, oh, that feels like a little narky. What I mean is that feels a little un, un uh, 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 cared for narcissistic tendencies or behaviors. So when I say like, oh, you're being like really narcissistic, I mean to say like, oh, you're having like a really bad relationship with your like sense of ego or, oh, you're being NPD, meaning like, mm, I think you might be on the like actual mental health spectrum or you're just giving me the energy of, you know what I mean? And so she's definitely toxic and she's definitely been abusive to people, but I think most people have been. I think that's why when I look at people, like, I'm like, oh, I can just point out all the things we've all done in our life that haven't been great. The question is, how do you hold people accountable? Well, outside of the law, you have boundaries for yourself. You do not give ultimatums to people. So for me, when I look at Gabby, like, I have to decide how to engage with Gabby. Gabby doesn't decide how to engage with me. I'm not in her life. Gabby isn't in my life. I decide how to engage with Gabby. Like, I don't watch Gabby content. I just catch up with Gabby on occasion to see how her journey is going. Because if I engage in too much Gabby content, I'm going to feel really icky about people, you know? So again, like when I'm thinking about Gabby, I'm thinking like, okay, I don't know. I don't think she's NPD, but I think she's high on narcissism. And I think she is very theater kid, very, I'm an artist, very like PRXO, very like, I am a genius. I am profound. I am like, she's very, you know what I mean? As long as she's not using it to maliciously go after people outside of her mental illness moments, like that's mental health then I think she's probably just like very into herself, which is probably just going to hurt her the most in the end. People need to have a relationship with her, meaning having boundaries. Like at the end of the day, you don't have to be friends with her. You don't have to talk to her. You don't have to watch her.
information and I don't share it, that's beyond gatekeeping. That is literally evil. And I love you and I do not hate you. So if something I'm saying is resonating with you and you feel like you need to delete your apps, God bless you. Godspeed. Go to GabbyHannahOfficial.com and sign up for texts and emails to be alerted when I put out new clothes or new music. <laughs> so let me tell you just how bad my addiction was. After I moved home, I redownloaded some apps to help me kind of, you know, soothe the anxiety. You know, just like a drink to take the edge off. And immediately, I'm metaphorically passed out in a metaphorical ditch. No metaphorical yeah. idea where my metaphorical keys and wallet are. So I downloaded this app called App Block, which not sponsored, but highly recommended. It is so awesome. Basically, you can lock yourself out of your apps and depending on the level of yeah see i'm not addicted i don't really show a lot of addictive patterns of anything i i don't have that history with myself so i wouldn't even think about this but i think it's really cool that there are modern ways to help yourself if you have a bad relationship with your phone or with balance i mean yeah i think like this is probably good that she does have access to these kinds of apps you know what i mean restriction that you choose you're you're out and you cannot get back in. It is a very great tool that will make you very happy. But this is how sick I am. I block my apps immediately. I downloaded a dating app. I went to app block. I filled out all the information. I blocked the apps. I closed app block. And then I went to the app store and downloaded a dating app. That's how serious it was. Just because I needed something to swipe on. I needed the validation of strangers. So I was on there for a week exactly. I went on two of the worst dates I've ever been on. And then I deleted the- I wanna the know why. I wanna know why. There's so many other ways to get dopamine hits. There's so many other ways to get things. Why does she want it? Validation? Like, what's the deeper reason? She took a year off social media. Does she know the deeper reason? Because, like, isn't there a deeper, deeper reason for your addiction? I would want to know why she's addicted in the first place. That's what the whole year off social media should have gotten her. I wonder if she's figuring that out. Like, what was the reason? Because, like, lots of people have addictions, but it's for a reason. And not everyone's having the same experience, right? The app and added it to the block list. You're welcome for the story time video, link down below. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. All this to say, man, I really was thriving without social media. I was having a real good time. And I go back to that, right? Like go back to no social media, right? Felt really nice. But here's why I came back. Because I'm a creator. I'm an artist. I'm an author. I'm a musician. I'm a She's like, doesn't she have enough money to pay people to do her social media for her? It's like Jordan Peterson and like he's addiction to social media, bro. A songwriter, I'm a designer. I want to share things. That is who God made me to be. And he also didn't give me all of this perseverance and tenacity and ambition and drive to just throw it away. He didn't give me all of this influence to throw it away. So I talked to a lot of friends about it. I talked to myself about it and I prayed a lot about it. And ultimately I have to be online to do the things that I know God is calling me to do. Oof. And I want to do those things. Cap. I'm calling cap on Gabby Hannah. I'm calling cap on Gabby Hannah. Girl. What did I say? I said what I said what I said. Same old Gabby. Same old Gabby. She painted over the mold in the house instead of getting rid of it. Same old Gabby things like you know sometimes in life we have to do things we're not super amped about or even things that scare us no one really likes to wake up and go to work every day and this is what it is for me to wake up and go to work every day and the fact that this is what it is for me to wake up and go to work every day is incredible this is what god called me to do and he gave me a whole year to figure out how to do it the right way and coming back i'm actually not worried about the hate or criticism or backlash or whatever it is i think i've proven to myself at this point that i can withstand just about anything People have said the worst and True. done the worst. Too. Gabby's gotten a lot of hate. She really is a champ for handling it. Let's see if she handles it better this time. But it's hard. I honestly would not want to be famous. It's exhausting. It's It looks so exhausting. Me, as far as online stuff goes, kind of attacked me from every angle and I'm still here. You cannot stop me. The only one that can stop me is God if he so chooses and he's on my team. My hesitancy was actually the fear that I wouldn't be strong enough to handle the praise because I've made the
I love humans. Be strong enough to handle the praise. <laughs> the only one that can stop me is God if he so chooses and he's on my team. My hesitancy was actually the fear that I wouldn't be strong enough to handle the praise because I've made the mistake before of letting the praise of people make me. And so I let the hate of people break me. So now as I'm coming back into this, I'm performing for an audience of one, but anyone else is welcome to stay for the show. And I hope you do. <laughs> I, I love humans. It's such a journey, bro. Uh, obviously, like, she's changed. Obviously, there's a different version of her coming out, but I don't think it's the version that's broken the cycle. I think it's the version of, oh, wait, hold on. No, there's more to the video. Hold on. No, Gabby Hanna official. Because you never know how much you got till you run out. Okay, that's how it ended. Okay, video done. Okay, sorry, video done. Yeah, I just think, um, I think it's a different version of her, but it's not the version of her that's going to break the cycle. It's the version of her that's uh, closer to breaking the cycle, but she hasn't broken it yet. So we'll see what happens. And I'm rooting for her, so I'll check in. Uh, same with Trisha, same with Pierre, same with lots of people. I'm rooting for them. You know, I see them change, I see them grow, but I'm waiting to see if they're going to break the cycle. And breaking the cycle means transforming fundamentally, foundationally, a core part of yourself. Actually, the core part of yourself is always there. You're just like chopping. You're like taking, what are those, what are those, like, uh, what is the little sea barnacles? The little guys that like end up being all over the whales and like the stuff. It's like all over the ships. It's like your core version of you is there and you're just like slowly taking these things off you and you're like popping them off. And then we get to see, like, okay, who are you without all of this fucking clutter? So she's definitely cleaner. She's definitely less cluttered. But she's not the version of herself that's going to break the cycle yet. But she's closer. And because she is closer, I am here for the journey. And I love that. Same with Trisha. Same with everybody else. I fucking love that. She's closer. Just not quite there. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll give it six months to a year. We'll catch back in. We'll see how she's doing. In my head, in me life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da. 